Dr. Ariane here from The Movement Paradigm. Did you ever wonder if anxiety and depression was caused purely by psychological reasons or if it may be from other causes? Specifically, the gut. That's what we're gonna talk about today, the gut-brain connection, the bacteria and neurotransmitters in your gut, as well as what you can do to improve that neurotransmitter function in your gut and brain to really help you improve your mood, feel better, and move through your life with ease. Before we jump in, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Ariane Missimer, and don't forget to hit that alert button to stay tuned for new content every single week. So the question is, is can your anxiety and or depression be coming from your gut? Yes, anxiety can come from many other physical causes. It can come from systemic inflammation. It can come from leaky gut where we have endotoxins released into the bloodstream coming through the epithelial lining of the small intestine and that creates therefore an immune reaction that can also lead to leaky brain where it crosses the blood brain barrier and can contribute to things like mood changes and brain fog, et cetera. We can also have it re related to hormonal changes. And last but definitely not least, we can have it from SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So in essence, the altered microbiome can be one of the biggest contributors to anxiety and depression. So the typical course of action in America is you present with anxiety and or depression and you are prescribed a SSRI, so a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. This could be something like Prozac or Paxil or Lexapro. And the reason these are prescribed is for low serotonin, our feel-good neurotransmitter. Now, the question to ask yourself is, why is your serotonin low? So serotonin is one of our key chemical messengers, i.e. neurotransmitter, that is going to signal to the brain. This is formed by the bacteria in the gut. And guess what? 90% of our serotonin is in our gut. So now we go back to the question of why is our serotonin low? Now we might want to dive into what might be happening in the gut that could be contributing to this. So SIBO, once again, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, it can be one of the huge underlying factors in anxiety and depression. So this is something that is definitely not looked at as frequently. And if you ex are experiencing something like bloating and just feeling overall lethargic and having other issues, then this would be something to look into as one of the potential causes of your anxiety and or depression. This essentially is when we have an overgrowth of the normal bacteria in the gut, and it creates a dysbiosis, which means just an imbalance in the, the good and bad bacteria. This in turn will lead to things like nutrient deficiencies, malabsorption, also imbalances in the neurotransmitters, and last but definitely not least is just systemic inflammation. So the gut-brain connection is a bi-directional communication between our gut and our brain. Our gut is our second nervous system. So the bacteria in the gut is essentially what's forming these neurotransmitters, our chemical messengers, our communicators to the brain. So we're gonna dive into what's, why it's important to look at the bacterial overgrowth in the gut, test appropriately when you may be having symptoms of anxiety and depression, as well as any digestive issues, any type of bloating, abdominal pain, um, any type of diarrhea, constipation, any of those symptoms and coupled with anxiety and depression should absolutely be tested for SIBO. SIBO is tested using a breath test, which is going to assess either hydrogen or methane gas. So you ingest something called lactulose, and because it cannot be absorbed, it will be present in the small intestine if it ferments with the bacteria in your gut. Then you will exhale either a methane or hydrogen gas. I will include a link for the SIBO test if you are interested. 
Irritable bowel syndrome has been used as a diagnosis for many, many years. And now what we're finding out is that IBS diagnosis is really SIBO in most cases. So when you have this diagnosis and you are experiencing anxiety and or depression, it is going to be imperative that you address one of the potentially root causes of what's happening. Because there's no way that you can have the appropriate amount of serotonin and even elements of dopamine uh, if you are experiencing SIBO. So what do you do about it? Number one, the first thing is to make sure you get properly tested and evaluated. The second is to include a low FODMAP diet. We wanna remove any type of foods, inflammatory foods, triggers that could be aggravating this condition. So low FODMAP foods are going to be easily digested carbohydrates. This is going to be a really important aspect of a SIBO protocol. Also eliminating things like gluten, which can be a really big driver in a leaky gut, which is a common a complaint or comorbidity along with SIBO. So I would definitely recommend eliminating gluten for sure. Um, and then anything else that could be inflammatory for you. Typically, supplementation is going to be required because you will likely have malabsorption issues. So it doesn't mean that you definitely will, but it's likely that that could be happening if this has been going on for quite some time. So you may have to do specific nutrient, highly bioavailable supplements until your body can uh, absorb a little bit more effectively and be, be able to repair the gut lining. Glutamine is one of the most abundant amino acids in the body for immune health and intestinal health. So this will be one of the very important nutrients that you'll want to ingest if you are diagnosed with SIBO, and it can be anywhere from 15 to 21 grams a day. You'll want to re-inoculate with probiotics. So typically, as it relates to SIBO, it is important that to recognize that not all probiotics will work for every SIBO patient. And it is typically going to be a spore-based probiotic uh, because other probiotics could make them worse. So antibiotics are typically used to treat the SIBO. This can depend on when exactly you do it, and there are different protocols, there's different philosophies on when is the appropriate time. However, it is going to be necessary in most cases, whether it's an herbal antibiotic or it is a conventional antibiotic, uh, to kill the bacteria. In summary, hopefully you can appreciate that there's way more to anxiety and depression than simply just psychological reasons. We've only scratched the surface of just one part of this, uh, but I wanted to really dive into the serotonin aspect of it, introduce the gut-brain connection, and uh, hopefully just have you think a little bit deeper about the why and how can you begin to address some of the root cause of why this could be happening to you. So as always, thank you so much for your support. Uh, if this was helpful, hit that like button, button, make a comment, and of course share it with your family and friends. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Ariane Missimer, and uh, hit the alert button to stay tuned for new content every week. Thank you so much and stay well.